any good at gambling yourself? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I get ga- well. I, it's funny because that was the last question that I was asked just now. But I, I, I do, and but at the same time, I don't believe in this notion of synthetic gambling. If you know what I mean, I like gambling in real life. I like what that means and exploring that. What's your uh, game of choice, though, if you have to go to a casino? Blackjack. Blackjack. Yeah, I like I like the simplicity of it. Can you tell me a little bit about making making cards and even just the lectures in the movie visually stimulating? Because I mean, I guess there's not that much to work with. There's not that much. No, action you're going right, on. and 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 I think with gambling, more often than not, it's quite boring to watch. Um, it's not a spectator sport, uh, even though there is a channel dedicated to poker. But uh, <clears throat> it's um. To me, it was always that sense of like, every time I watched a gambling movie, they always looked to speed ramp things or create a visceral high, and they did it through camera trickery rather than the actual action that was playing out. And so I thought, what what could we do to actually play this in a more dry way and play it, keep the stakes high? Because obviously, the, the bets that their people make have extraordinary stakes to them, you know, in the win or lose sense or how much they're putting putting down. but. I shot it like a Western. I shot it uh, much more about the sense of anticipation and the silences and the eye line and all of that rather than the actual physical act of violence, you know. Can you talk about some of the finer details in the visuals as well? Because there were a lot of little things that were catching my eye, like the things hanging on the wall in Michael K. Williams' office, uh, John Goodman's hat, I kept trying to read what it said, the, the vacant lot sign towards the end. Yeah. Are there any fun little details like that that you're hoping people take note of? Yeah, are you re- are you meaning in Michael's um, office, the man of the year? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely what I noticed. Yeah, Pope Francis. He wants to be Pope Francis. You know, in a way, he sees himself as this very benevolent dictator. Uh, not that Pope Francis is a benevolent dictator, but he sees himself as this guy who actually wants to give back to his community, even though he's a criminal. Um, he says, he says, you know, I, I want to go straight. You know, some people are ready to be bent. Some people want to go straight. I want to go straight, and and. So um, I like that idea, and, and the empty lot sign at the end was a visual signifier of where Jim was in his life at that particular moment, which is a clean slate. He was ready to start again. Um, and I color-coded each of the money lenders. So the red hat, it's less about what was written, I think that was the name of the spa, but more about everything that Frank touched, the red phone, the red car that he drove, the red hat, it was all red. Now that you say it, I mean, that's a fun detail to go back and rewatch and look for. Yeah, Neville's all black. Everything he wears is black, and the color coding of his office is pretty black. And then Mr. Lee is green, so the guy that works for him has a green lollipop, and you know, so. (laughs) Before we have to wrap up, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing next? Because the internet tells me you're in pre-production on Echo Chamber, Mm. but I don't know if I can trust that or not, so is that the case? Um, I've been in I've been in pre-production on that for five years, and and uh, it's really because it's a ten it's a ten part TV series, um, science fiction, that ha- Daniel Hardy, my co-writer, and I we've been building gradually in between projects. So what I hope is is whether it be next year or the year after, we'll we'll go into into it. But my intention is to shoot all ten episodes, um, and and be across all of it. So it's a it's a huge undertaking, but it's it's my passion project. Yeah. Are you working with anybody on the British soldier role yet? The British. Is it? It's a the British soldier that. Gets oh in? no! You know what? It's based on a true story of a British soldier yeah. who goes undercover into the IRA. But we transferred it to a more uh, science fiction context. Um, so it follows the same trajectory of the character, but it's a, a different different setting now.